Hi everybody! Hi Noga! Hi Gil! So hi! Uh, welcome to an... <laughs> Tywin Lannister. He is the most powerful person in his generation. Seven kingdoms united in fear of Tywin Lannister. The savior of the city and the hand of the king. He and knows what's best for the Lannister. He knows what's best, so he's pretty special. He knows he's very powerful. He knows right. all that needs to be known and stuff. Shall I explain to you in one easy lesson how the world works? Use small words. I'm not as bright as you. So his first traumatic experience was basically having a dad, a deadbeat dad, who ruined the family name and the family fortunes. It reminds me of the Oedipus Complex which is one of the like, major uh, cornerstones in the psychoanalytic theory and is probably right. most uh, you know, uh, familiar. Uh, kill your dad, monster. you marry your mom, and exactly. the story. It's the old accidentally kill your father, accidentally marry your mother plot. It goes way back. Freud can tell you a lot about it at Crash Course. The, the child wants to uh, uh, murder his dad and uh, be with, a, with his mother. And, uh, um, and then he sees that his father has a bigger penis than he does. Okay, and so that's he, a problem. And that's a problem for him. He says, oh, oh, his penis is bigger, he's bigger, he's much stronger. Okay. He sees that his mother and his sister, they don't have a penis, so they, he assumes that uh, the father castrated them. And when he okay. sees like the menstrual blood of uh, the mother, okay. he thinks, oh, yeah, that's the proof that he castrated her because she's bleeding from uh, down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he sees like, the, it's called the primal scene. He sees his parents having sex because that's what, you know, happened uh, back in the days, and he sees it as violence and as castration because uh, mm. there's a lot of uh, action and right, uh, right, right. yelling. And yelling and, uh, and screaming, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for him, it's like a very violent thing. And he says, wow, my father is really violent, mm. and so I have to be careful. So Tyrion grew up with a castrated dad, basically. And politically. Politically. He doesn't want to be like his castrated father. My father, Titus Lannister, nearly bankrupted our house with his poor investments and allowed himself to be mocked openly at court. So he went to the Castamils and castrated them by killing the entire family, no heirs, nothing, boom. Mm -hmm. He wanted to beat his dad, you know, and Castamils, castration, castration anxiety. And, and it's good to be afraid of your dad? Yeah, according to Freud, it's good to be afraid of your dad because only then do you accept like the society's rules, like the law of the father. You, uh, you accept that you need to be this and that person, you need to do this and that thing. You develop like a social uh, conscience. Okay. Explain to me why it is more noble to kill 10,000 men in battle than a dozen at dinner. So that's why you did it? To save lives, to end the war, to protect the family. Uh, but also, like, the, the, the thought that you're either castrating or castrated. In this world, you can't be safe in any way, especially when you're in, like, a certain political status. Have you ever lost before? You think I'd be in my position if I'd lost a war? So the political aspect of it is uh, uh, very fitting because uh, Lacan said that uh, the phallus is not really like a, what, what is a phallus? It's like a, an erected uh, penis. It's really a symbol to power, to social right. power and social status. Right. So being castrated politically, being taken away the power that you once had or the ah, power that right, you right, 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 crave right. so much. I think he had more political traumas, uh, Taiwan. Let's think about it. So he became Hand of the King very young, at a very young age. So that's a very uh, powerful position politically. So you have a big phallus. But then what Ares did to him, he refused to wed uh, Tywin's daughter, mm -hmm. Cersei, with his son, Rhaegar, just like cock blocked him all the way. So prevented like his seed, actual seed going through like his family, whatever. He took Jamie, he made him uh, a knight of the King's Guard, which also castrated him politically because now he can't be an heir and can't produce children. And then there was the story, like this weird story that he sexually harassed or assaulted uh, Tywin's wife. Mm -hmm. Maybe even raped her. I, Tywin Lannister, brought 10,000 Lannister troops to the gates of King's Landing in order to bring the bloodshed to a quick and decisive conclusion. And then he came in and castrated him completely by wiping out his, his line, entire line, his mm -hmm. grandchildren, right. baby, everybody, boom, just like cut it off, cut your phallus off, boom, there's nothing left. And the children, 
even the little children. And what do you think about, about Tywin's uh, relationship with his uh, children? It seems that like, nothing can really grow around him. Is he castrating them? Mm -hmm. His children are uh, narcissistic extensions of him. Right, they're like a Lannister, a generic yeah. Lannister. A generic Lannister. I mean, what he does really is he tries to, uh, to cut off any form of autonomy on their side right. and just to rule them. I am Queen Regent, not some brood man. You're my daughter! You will do as I command, and you will marry Loras Tyrell. Father, don't make me do it again, please. Not another word. In Tyrion, he tells him you can't have sex with Shay. And here is another woman, and have sex with her on my orders. Roose Bolton will be named Warden of the North until your son by Sansa comes of age. I believe you still have some work to do on that score. So he reenacts all these, uh, the, all these political dynamics even within his own family. Uh, different characters in his life, also in his family, are his phalluses by proxy. I mean, you have uh, Joffrey. Joffrey is the king. Tywin doesn't feel the need to be the formal or actual king. But he knows that he can control everything right. through Joffrey. It's like a puppet, you know, like his right. phallus by proxy, is a carrier of power. My father won the real war. He killed Prince Rhaegar. He took the crown while you hid on a costly rock. The king is tired. If you think he is the most powerful man in the realm, then you don't know what you're talking about because it's all me. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Like killing all the customers, sacking the, the capital city where he lived for like, uh, whatever, 15 years. That's super cruel. Killing all Targaryens and having them raped, sending the mountain. She was raped and murdered by the mountain. The mountain follows your orders. Of course I blame you. So you deny involvement in Elias' murder, categorically. And then uh, Tywin can remain the calm and like, uh, you know, the cool one. So like his firstborn male heir, Jamie, has been castrated politically, and his secondborn, Tyrion, secondborn mm -hmm. male, that's like an insult, his very existence mm -hmm. is an insult to everything that Tywin stands for. It's like everyone in, like in the Lannister family is super beautiful. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. guy just hideous and walking, like not Peter Dinklage, like in the, yeah. in the books. It's just like a... To tell the body. You are an ill-made, spiteful little creature, full of envy, lust and low cunning. And this son, you can, maybe you can say castrated Tywin, mm -hmm. because he killed his wife, like the person that he used to have sex with. He <laughs> just took it, took it away. Why? You ask that? You who killed your mother to come into the world? And to teach me humility, the gods have condemned me to watch you waddle about, wearing that proud lion that was my father's sigil and his father's before him. He takes these dynamics of either castrating or being castrated uh, to every realm of his life. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can see that he has like a reverse Oedipal uh, scenario when he sleeps with his son's girlfriend. No, it's not the child who sleeps with his mother. You know, he sleeps with his son's girlfriend. Oh, yeah. That's some Freudian shit confirmed right there. Tywin kind of castrated himself politically. He could have remarried, then had plenty of more babies, mm -hmm. be very, whatever, fruitful. I think that Tywin's character it really shows what it's like to be disenchanted, to feel like you're doing everything right, and still luck doesn't smile your way, you know? You should have a son who's like me, um, everything should go smoothly in my life. I shouldn't experience any loss because I'm strong, so I can, you know, fend mm -hmm. off anything that's right. trying to hurt my family. But? But in life, what can we do? It's not right. up to us. For 40 years I've tried to teach you. If you haven't learned by now, you never will. My children. 
You disgraced the Lannister name for far too long. Maybe that's why he also focuses on, you know, the things that are controllable in his eyes. He talks the talk, but he doesn't walk the walk, right? Oh, one more thing. You will not take that whore to court. Do you understand? Sometimes it also has to do with the narcissism. I'm allowed to do what other people aren't. It's, when it's me, it's yeah, different. It's not yeah, the same as when other people do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When others yeah. do it, it's... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So if you had this guy, Tywood Lannister, mm -hmm. coming in, lay on the couch, and he's like, Heal me! Heal me, Noga! But I don't think that Tywin would say that. He right. would probably come and say how much he doesn't understand why his children never listen to him. <laughs> he tells them what to do and they don't follow it. They just do whatever they want to do. Yes, yes. Why uh, is it happening to me? Yeah, why is it happening to me? I'm perfect and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Everything for the family, nothing for myself. I don't no. ask for anything. <laughs> just that you do what I say, you know? In, in everything in your life. That's exactly, it. in everything in your life. Mm. I don't ask anything but your soul, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so he's not much for interest inspection and thinking what did I do wrong with my sons and with everything there's no one that he can look in the eye and say okay I, I need your help mm -hmm. help me but will he even say that to himself like I need help I mean he, he is the kind of man uh, who only wants to penetrate and never be penetrated and uh, okay. is that a problem <laughs> just for the uh, for the men watching at home <laughs> I'm not I'm talking sure, about physically, sure, sure. Ah, yeah, okay, so. even though many heterosexual men would want to be penetrated and that doesn't mean that they're not heterosexual if that's what they're afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> no, but many men do want to be penetrated emotionally. Okay, whatever, don't admit it, okay. But uh, they want to be penetrated. <laughs> so uh, Tywin, let's talk about Tywin. Uh, yeah, that's Tywin. Tywin. Like that's Tywin. Tywin can't admit his own uh, need to be penetrated or, you know, helped or, uh, you know, relieved in a way. He just, uh, it's either being castrated or castrate. He goes on castrating people. That's what he does. In the books, he has like a digestion problem and he's constipated all the time. And you can even see, I mean, if you want to, <laughs> the, the emotional side of uh, uh, feces is like, in a way, it's being penetrated from the inside out. <laughs> So like the exam is okay. No, all this Freudian shit, come on. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Being penetrated from the inside out, is that like physically possible in any way? Yeah, it is, it is. It's in you. Okay. It's in you. Yeah, I mean, but it pierces through your rectum in a way. <laughs> okay. In a very clear and in a definitive very clear. way. It, okay. so, and uh, so, so, so being constipated and then in the, like in the books when he's dead, like he farts and everybody's like, <sighs> like his body farts. So what does that mm -hmm. tell you like psychologically that you hold in yeah. so much feces in? My stomach remains quite strong, however. Hold a lot of uh, emotions in, a lot of uh, like everything, all his, uh, you know, the things that he didn't, didn't want to face uh, right. in himself, he kept inside. And that's a little bit of a control freak too, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, I've got to hold everything in. I have to be over there all the time presentable. Yes. Presentable men do mm -hmm. not take a dump. We no. are presidential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm sure Donald Trump never takes a dump. Yeah. So he's like hopeless. Basically. He's not hopeless, but he's definitely, uh, uh, he has problems. <laughs> <laughs> Which he doesn't... Uh, he doesn't acknowledge. doesn't acknowledge. Again, it's a def defense mechanism. It's not... Right. Uh, so that's a bit also like Oedipus uh, in the play. You know, you try to escape your destiny. You try to castrate and never be castrated. You try to penetrate and never be penetrated. But at the end... Whoa. And by who? His own child. <laughs> George Martin be crazy you be crazy dude you be crazy okay so no therapy for him he's just an asshole <laughs> just like it's good good riddance it's good not riddance. the professional jargon an asshole. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry sorry so if you enjoyed the video please hit like and subscribe to get all our psychoanalyzing videos so thank you Noga that was a pleasure as always even though a little bit weird at times <laughs> 
We'll see you all next time. Bye. Thanks for watching.